two, one. To me, they wanted it more than we did. You know, we've been talking about how, you know, how the team chemistry is great and how everyone thinks there's so much talent on our team, and there is, okay? But no one's gonna give it to you, okay? No one's gonna give it to you. It's their home field, they wanna win. They're undefeated at home. That's how much pride we have to have away and at home because no one is gonna give you anything. Everybody wants to beat you. Everyone wants to be you. Although the Hawks were unable to make an impact on the scoreboard, they continue to make an impact on the life of a special teammate. Emily's a big part of our team. We're really lucky to have her um, be able to be our teammate, and a lot of us refer to her as our sister, our little, our little sister. And it's just great to have that environment with all that she's been through, to be able to have that inspiration for all of us to remember that every time we're on the field. I was 10 years old when I was diagnosed with diabetes insipidus. And then a year later is when they told me I had a brain tumor. She had a supercellar germinoma. It's a, a brain tumor that starts as a thickening. It thickened to the pituitary stalk, and then the tumor just grew, and it just grows and fills the cavity. When Emily was finished with her treatment, she was introduced to an organization called Team Impact. Team Impact is an organization looking for chronically ill children that probably wouldn't be able to play sports or participate in college activities and match them with the team. And there were three schools at one point, I believe, but Moms was the first to respond, and we right away wanted to do Moms. She's part of our team, um, and her family is, is part of our family. And, you know, I give a lot of credit to them. They're, they're very easy to get along with. She's so fun. She's great. Uh, she lights up any room she's in, and it's so inspiring to to see all that she's been through, like I mentioned, and to be able to still see that positivity within her is something we all can learn from and bring to our everyday lives. We don't lose at home, okay? We don't lose at home. So that is extremely important, okay? Because going into conference play, we want everybody to know, because that's the way it's always been, okay? It used to be the Great Lawn was tough to play at, now it's Hess Field on the Great Lawn, okay? Hardest place to play in the MAC. You established that tonight. Let's go, home field, our home field. Let's go, home field, come on. One, two, three, pass. Two, rock. Peter, don't take so long, don't take so long. In. Oh. 16, 10, and four, 16, 10, and four. I think it's so frustrating, it's just the way you have to channel your frustration, I guess. Um, just staying together, like staying positive as a team, and, you know, feeding off each other, like, if one person's working hard, you're working hard. So, like, it just all comes together. If somebody else is working hard, you work hard for them as well. Yeah, a lot of times, it's just really unlucky, like, you could shoot 27 times or however many times we did and not one will go in. Might hit it off the post, a goalie may save it, but sometimes it just doesn't go your way. Okay, getting it out wide, they have no answer. One versus one, we're isolated, I'll take our chances. Any player here versus any of theirs, I'll take us all day long. Okay, but you competed, okay, you stayed together and you did what, you did what was needed to be done. You just missed one little piece. Okay, and unfortunately that's how people measure results, right? Who scores the most goals? But we defended, okay, we got a shutout, and you created a, a ton of chances and he rebounded from a poor second half in the last game. The team turned the page on a frustrating night with the day at the lake. It was a great day off to be able to just go up to the lake and enjoy ourselves and forget about that and move forward and um, just have some fun, a break from preseason. The, the frisbee's over there. Bang, 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 bang. Wee! <laughs> All right, guys, now. Oh, the voice <laughs> I think everybody hung out with each other instead of just like in smaller groups like we usually do. Um, and it just, it went well because people were just, you know, themselves and just hanging out and it wasn't stressful. It was still tiring because we were out in the sun all day, but it was definitely nice to relax and just hang out with the team other than like being on the field with them and 
doing this with them, and doing that with them, like being on the water, just hanging out in the backyard, is just a lot of fun. The city of brotherly love was anything but friendly to the Hawks. You are a Division I student athlete, and so were the players on the other team. Okay, they are out competing you, at least did for the first 25 minutes. Okay, credit to the reserve group for going in and bringing a spark. Okay, and showing that it's not so hot that we can't actually compete and we can't actually work hard. I don't get it. We haven't had a game in a week. Okay, you guys should be so excited to play and to play against another team and to get better. Okay, and we didn't see that for the first 25 minutes from, from everyone as a group. Okay, give up a goal in the first minute, okay, and then we just we put our heads down. I just don't think we worked that hard, and we didn't think we competed. Um, and that's the thing that I always ask the players. I, I can deal with results if they don't go our way. I just, I, wanna com I want them to compete and work as hard as they can. Everybody wants to win, so I think they understand that if we want to win, we need to work for it. It's not just going to be given to us. Well, we came out, we needed to get better. Coach set the tone right away, and um, it was great to see us all follow through and be able to respond to coach setting the tone and all of us kind of had that within ourselves also. So being out there and having coach remind us we need to get better this week, we're not starting the way that we need to, obviously something needed to change. Coach like just told us that we need to have the right mentality, we need to do this, we need to get it done, and we can't be like weak, we can't be soft. I think we spent the first couple weeks trying to figure out who our team is um, and who's going to play with each other and I think when you're doing that you're really focused on the, the tactical side of, of the game and I think we got away from just getting them to really get after it and compete and work hard and want to win and so we spent a couple days you know doing that in one versus one and because really in a one versus one battle it's just you against whoever you're playing with, um, playing against. And we made certain matchups because we wanted certain players to compete against certain players. You know, the next day we had 2v2 matchups and there was reasons why we had two playing against a certain two and why we had two playing with each other. A trip to American presented a new opportunity for the Hawks to test themselves. The game at American, I thought the trip overall was, was a big success. It's not easy to get on a bus and drive five hours each way and, and then get off and, and play. And I think the players enjoyed the opportunity to, you know, to walk around and take in some of the, you know, historic landmarks and be, you know, a part of, you know, that experience. And then I thought in the game we did a great job of, of just having a professional attitude. And the environment was difficult because there wasn't a lot, there weren't a lot of fans. Um, it was, you know, a Friday afternoon at three o'clock, so not a super packed house. Um, and sometimes I think you have to, you know, you have to make your own noise. Um, and I think the reserve group did a great job of, of being enthusiastic. And, um, you know, in those two matches, American and Seton Hall, you know, we, had, we had 31 shots. And I think we had 18 uh, corners. So there's a lot of attack, you know, being generated. I feel like I kind of rushed it now that I think about it. Like, as soon as the referee blew the, blew the whistle, I like, I just went for it. I didn't like, I would rather like take a deep breath and like get myself like, you know, like just settled in and then, you know, go through my regular PK shooting routine. But I hit it about probably two or three feet in and like probably waist tight to the goalie, I think. And she just happened to save it and then it pops back out. And I guess I rushed that too. So I hit it over the net. Rachel ran on to it. Um, both Seton Hall girls ran on to it. Um, I was also there. Um, the goalie decided to back up onto her line and it gave us an opportunity to get the ball and take a shot. So I got the ball, I took the shot and went in and then ran over to the bench uh, to celebrate with my teammates because Maddie asked me to do that um, <laughs> a few games ago and it just never happened. So it was like really cool to like celebrate with the whole team instead of just like those who were on the field. The goal only happened because everybody else was working for 90 minutes prior to that, or 89 minutes, 55 seconds prior to that. 
Um, and it just shows that you can come and you can battle really hard and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. This time, in this case, it did. Now is when um, preseason is officially over, okay? And this is where I get nervous, okay? Because now there's lots of distractions, okay? So now there are people around, there are choices to make, there are decisions to be had, okay? We've had five weeks of just effort, hard work, sleep, eat, soccer. Now we add class to that. Let's minimize our social, social distractions because really the regular season is a third of the way over now. Drew, you didn't drive here for ordinary either.